So that in 88, you're a manager and you guys had a home game against the Mets. Things went a little crazy that game. What happened? Well, uh, Mookie Wilson, uh, he hit what looked like a routine ground ball to the shortstop. Uh, but the throw to first base was wide and, you know, it pulled the first baseman's foot off the bag. And then the umpire, uh, Dave Pallone, he didn't make the safe call. You know what I'm talking about here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Where the so guy, the first where the guy scored from second? Yeah, because the first baseman be, waited for the call no, because instead of making the play at the plate. Because Dave Pallone was down on his knee uh, making a late call. And by the time exactly. I knew I knew he called him safe, the guy had already rounded second, uh, third from second base and scored a, a winning run. That pissed mm -hmm. me off because he didn't give me time to react. Right. And that's so when that, you got on the field and you started arguing with the Empire. Yeah. Very seldom. What happened next? Um, I shoved him because he poked me. He poked me right here and made me bleed. Well, like that, I saw him and I pushed him. And I got a 30-day suspension. So that was a deal where an umpire put his hands on me instead of me putting a hands on the umpire. Well, uh, Pallone, he wrote a book, and there was a whole chapter about that incident. He said that he never touched you, and the now, National where League personnel investigated. Where did blood come from my face right here? Right here. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying well, he denied I'm, it. I was there. I was there. Yeah. I remember. So for him to get write a book and say he didn't touch me, he's a lying piece of shit. I hate to say that, but that's what he is. And I like Dave Pallone. You know, uh, but for him to say he didn't touch me, why else why, why else would I react the way I reacted? Well, after that incident with Pallone happened, all hell broke loose. Fans started throwing radios and cigarette lighters on the field. Uh, they had to suspend the game for 15 minutes. And when the dust settled, well, Pallone actually ended up leaving the field and they had to finish the game with three umpires. And... After all was said and done, you got suspended for 30 days, which is the longest suspension ever for an on-field incident with a manager. Do you feel like that was overkill? Yeah, because he's the one who screwed up. He's the, first of all, he missed the call. Second, secondly, then he poked me almost in the eye. So I guess I'm lucky I didn't punch him. <laughs> Just shoved him. Because normally I would punch somebody that did that. Because okay. the, fans, the fans could see, could, first of all, they could see he blew the call. You know, mm -hmm. down on his knees, acting like Hollywood. Yeah, I agree. That's, I don't know, life's too, too, too short yeah. to wouldn't even worry about something like that. Okay, so then 1989 rolls around. Yeah. Now, reports are to circle that you were betting on baseball games. And originally, you were formally questioned in February of that year. Um, and you denied the allegations. And by that time, Giamatti, you know, was running things. And, you know, it was relatively quiet until Sports Illustrated actually released a detailed report on the allegations. You know, they say that you had placed bets on baseball games on March 21st, 1989. It dated back to April 3rd. Um, you know, then rumors started to, to circle that you weren't paying some of the bookies. They were saying that the mob was involved and so forth. And, and first, you, you first see what I'm saying? Wait, the story, wait, the story wait, started wait, to get first crazy. Of all, uh, why would I be betting on a baseball game in March? So yeah. got, it's a spring training game. Are they, are, is that report saying I bet on spring training games? That's what you're saying. Yeah. The last time I checked, we didn't play no major league games in March. Does that make any sense to you? Well, okay, well, hold on. This might be wrong. I think maybe that the 
the Sports Illustrated came out on that date. So it, I don't think you'll say you were betting on that date, but I think that that's when the report came out. So, so that might actually be my mistake. Uh, just tell you, 89 is when I start betting on baseball. It's, okay. not, it's not a secret. It's not a secret. Because uh, I believed in my players, I believed in my team, and I believe we're going to win every game. And I, and I was a gambler. So if you're a gambler, you're kind of looking for an edge, and the edge was that uh, I'm running the game. I didn't run the game any differently betting on it than not betting on it. I've, I've, I've managed every game to win the game. And no one will ever say you could tell I was gambling on this or that because of the way I run the game. I never made a blunder in a decision, whether it was this pinch hitter or that pinch hitter or this relief pitcher or that relief pitcher. I was always consistent with the way I run the game. Now ask your questions. Okay, well, they brought in a lawyer named John M. Dowd to investigate the whole situation. His strike force guy. He used yeah. to put mafia types behind bars. Right. Uh, according to the report, they're saying that you allegedly bet on 52 Reds games in 1987, and you're bet betting a minimum of $10,000 a day. No, that's not true. That's, I wouldn't make it that much money to bet 10000 a day. See, I get a kick out of you guys in the press. You always go on these goddamn reports. Reports from 50 years ago. How am I supposed to know what's in a report 50 years ago? Can you tell you got me pissed off right now? Can you tell that? I can tell. Okay? Yeah. Because I don't want to hear about reports. I want someone to sign their goddamn name to it, to a report. Betting $10,000 a day. Christ, I'm not making enough bet 10000 a day. And you're going to also say I've, I've stiffed bookmakers? I've never sti stiffed a bookmaker in my life, okay? But the report said I did. Who's the report? John Dowd? Well, the, the report also said there was no evidence that you actually bet against the Reds. Well, no shit. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that. That's not, that's yesterday's newspapers. Right. Right. But unfortunately, the way it's set out, that it vi you know you violated a rule where you can't bet against the game. I understood. Game. I understand. I broke yeah. the rules. Okay, let me explain something to you. I broke the rules. It cost me a hundred million. That's what it cost me by breaking the rules. So I don't want to hear about breaking the rules. Hundred million dollars. It cost me betting on baseball. So who got penalized the most? You? The guy you give did. the report? I did. You did. I did. Right. Well, initially you denied it and you filed a lawsuit. Well, I, I denied it because my lawyers told me to because I, I didn't think they had any proof.